All right, brothers, we'll bid you welcome uh, this afternoon and uh, welcome to the second uh, portion of the new member education track. Um, and we're going to be uh, going through a lot of great information here this afternoon about new member education. You had a great session this morning. Uh, you got a chance to hear a little bit of, of background on overall building courageous leaders, as well as getting some insight from Logan on the, the basic nuts and bolts of what new member educators do. And we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper this afternoon and, and make this a little more of a intensive experience uh, when it comes to new member ed and gonna be touching on some of the same points that, that Logan talked about um, in his early session. Um, but uh, we want to hear from you and really, to, um, really uh, want you all to help bring this to life more than anything and uh, really help your fellow brothers that are on the line here today, help them understand about how they can implement some of the great ideas that are gonna be popping up, um, gonna be popping up as we're uh, moving along here. So uh, without further ado, uh, Logan, uh, any, uh, any housekeeping we need to take care of before we uh, get rolling here? Any instructions that the brothers need? Um, the, the main thing is just, uh, you know, make sure you guys are engaged, paying attention to chat and, and, and you know, and using each other as a resource here. Um, you know, I know even in the earlier session, we talked about some on the uh, FIGAM website, but your brother is probably your greatest resource. Um, so really make sure to, to capitalize on that. Um, and then just to answer that most recent question, uh, if you're with any brothers that are having audio issues and can't hear us, please uh, get them to hop on Zoom. That seems to be resolving it for most. Obviously, if you're having audio issues, you can't hear me right now. Um, you probably just see my mouth moving, so. All right. So, and, and yeah, if you do have questions, um, we are monitoring the chat feed uh, as best we can while we're also uh, presenting uh, the content here for you. So with that, Logan, should we get underway? I think so. I can go ahead and take us. Uh, yeah, we can go ahead and get started, I guess. Hit it. Um, yeah. So uh, again, thank you all for coming uh, today. Like Jade said, we're going to be touching a little bit on what we've already talked about and going a little more in depth. Um, you know, Foundation of Courage, New Member Education. So uh, that is also the name of the new program that is available. Um, I don't know if any of you all have tried it. If you have, uh, if you've been one of the pilot groups, please put that in the chat. It'd be great to hear, um, you know, who's, who's piloting that new program. Uh, otherwise, I think we can get started with introductions. Um, for, for all of you, uh, <laughs> you, you if you're in the first session, uh, you heard my introduction a couple times. I'm Logan. I am the field secretary for the Southwest region. Um, I, I believe I have some of you guys, uh, you know, as uh, in some of the chapters I work with. Um, I graduated from UAB uh, pretty recently in 2020, so I'm not too far removed. Um, so hopefully if you guys do end up with any new member education questions, I'm, I'm able to kind of help answer those. All right, thanks, Logan. Hi, my name is Jade Metcalf. I'm the co-presenter here today. I'm a graduate brother from Washington State University, and it looks like on this slide, somebody uh, slipped in my graduation year, so now you know how old I am. Um, so no jokes about my age. Uh, like Logan, I was a field secretary right out of school and uh, have also volunteered in a number of other roles, uh, Purple Legionnaire, Section Chief in a few areas, uh, currently on the BCA at UT Dallas, where I make my home here in the greater Dallas, Texas area. And uh, in my professional role, I am the vice president of marketing strategy for an ad agency called Heart Hanks. And there are 4,000 of us around the world. And we have uh, fun working with companies like Bank of America and Sony and some other brands you might be familiar with. But my, my passion in the fraternity is new member education. And that's what uh, brings me here today. Um, actually, uh, I've worked the new member education uh, track, I guess, for the last 15 years uh, at Academy, and uh, this is going to be the first time virtually. So we'll see how this goes, and uh, hopefully we'll, at the end of the day, you, you all will walk away with uh, some, some good sound information that you can implement immediately. Now, you've, you've heard who we are, and um, we've uh, taken up time telling you about who we are. We want to find out who you are. 
if you uh, can, can you uh, head over to the polls tab in, uh, in the Pathable screen there? I want to find out who's here today. Um, we just uh, fired up a poll to find out you know, how many new member educators we have, um, assistant new member educators. We want to find out who's here and want to make sure we fashion our information so that it works out well for as many of the, the uh, participants as possible. So when you uh, head on over to the polls, please go ahead and uh, just click who you are and hit vote. And we'll, uh, uh, we will tally and find out who all's here real quick. If, uh, if you're having trouble finding it, if you are in, uh, like a, a, you know, on a web browser, so PC or Mac, if you uh, are in the chat tab, um, if you go to the top of that, there should be a polls option and you can click that to get to um, the most recent poll that should be there at the top. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's a, it's a new platform for everyone. Don't be afraid to, to ask us questions, even if it's just how to navigate a little bit. We're more than happy to help with that. Okay. Logan, are you seeing the results there down the way? Uh, I'm not. I'm going to vote and see if that does it. Oh, okay. It does. So. Ah, Yahtzee. Okay. Oh, lots of new member educators and future new member educators. This is fantastic. All right. All right. My kind of crowd. Uh, my favorite people, the new member educators, um, the brothers with some of the most important uh, jobs in the fraternity. So 63% of you are new member educators uh, and uh, future new member educators came in a close second there. So I think we're going to have some content that is going to uh, be right in your wheelhouse. Wonderful. Thank you for participating in that. All right, moving right along. Well, our mission today, brothers, uh, really is to help equip you for immediate wins. Uh, we know that the, the spring semester is starting up for a lot of you come Monday. And so we're not going to you know, dive into how to revamp an entire program uh, kind of thing. We are going to talk about some core principles as we go through this. But most importantly, we want to make sure that you have some tools that you can walk away with today and be able to implement those back at your chapter and make some revisions, um, you know, in order to really uh, have the great kind of pledge, uh, excuse me, new member education program that you want to have in place. You know, the kind of experience maybe that you wanted as, as a uh, new member and you'd uh, really enjoy having uh, for your new members under your tutelage. So really, you know, making this as functional as possible. And that's why we really need your input uh, during this session because you know, we may know some of the principles out there, but you know, you know exactly how to implement things and what ideas really work. Uh, so being able to share that knowledge from, you know, gosh, we've got a number of chapters from all across North America represented here today. I saw Oregon, I saw Kansas, I saw Virginia. Um, so states uh, all across the country, all represented here. All right, and what we're going to be covering today, four big things here. Whoops. Apologies. That's all right, no problem. Um, the first thing we're going to do is, you know, really help you assess your current program and uh, by using measurable outcomes. And really, when it comes to new member education, we can measure the outcomes that we're producing. You heard Logan touch on this in the first session, and so we're going to talk through some ways that help you assess your current program. We're also going to go through some best in class new member ed programs uh, and how they've adjusted during COVID. Uh, we have been able to draw upon the experience of some uh, stellar programs out there in Phi Gamma Delta and be able to pull in some ideas from of, of ways that they implement new member education, not only traditionally, but also in this new environment where we're doing a lot of things virtually. And we're going to use all that, the assessment, the best in class ideas, the ideas you're going to be helping us out with uh, to help you all create just a real simple action plan for this spring. Uh, we talked earlier about how this is going to be very functional. And so creating that action plan is going to be an important piece of all this. And lastly, 
to implement that action plan, we want to make sure that you know what resources are available to you uh, to help you out as you want to make the, those changes in your chapter or colony uh, after we walk away from here today. So this, this session is actually going to be the easy part. The work really starts uh, once we break here today and you want to implement that action plan and uh, having those resources available to you is going to hopefully help you uh, make that happen. All right, you've so, probably heard me uh, talk enough. I'm going to hand it over to Logan uh, to talk about the assessment end of things. Yeah, thank you, Jade. Um, and then thanks for kind of setting up this, this presentation we'll be covering. Um, so like we said at the beginning, guys, we want this to be as interactive as possible, um, you know, even though we can't be in person. And so if you guys could please utilize that chat feature here um, and, and really kind of help us answer this question a little bit. Um, how, does a, how does a chapter know how good their new member program is? Uh, you know, we talk about we want the best program or we have the best program, but what does that look like? How do we know? When we get started here, it's, uh, it's generally measurable, so. Seeing retention, that's great. Involvement, great. Uh, encouraging their friends to join, good one. I like that. They integrated into the chapter activities. Mm. It's great, excited to participate. How strong the brotherhood is overall. Oh, Zach Cooper, I really like yours. Continuous involvement. We're going to touch on that. That's great. Having meaningful relationships with the new member education, uh, new member educator post initiation. Um, yeah, with some of these, uh, you know, there may be some central themes. Ones where they're, you know, enjoy talking to the new member educator after or. Um, they're sharing uh, their great five game experience with everyone that enthusiasm like Jack uh, just threw out there. Uh, if, if guys are doing these things, uh, maybe what do we think that's in indicative of? It's a, uh, there we go. That's great. Yeah, Kendall, that was great that they feel welcome. They feel like they're part of the group. That's awesome. There's that mutual respect between brothers and new members. Thank you, Jack. Great. Anyone have anything else? Kind of some other ways we, we maybe see, you know, what's how we know a new member education program is good. Yeah, the initiation rate. That's awesome.
I think uh, Jade is a testament to that last one. We'll be on college years, you know, that uh, not for college days alone, how well that resonates with them. Yep. Very good. I like that, Andrew. Ah, Tim, good. Getting involved with chapter operations. Apologies again that it jumped around. <laughs> uh, want to be a new member educator when they grow up. I like it, Zach. Good stuff, brothers. Sweet. Um, we can see. Yeah, what they can provide to the chapter. They see it. That's great. You know, in addition to all these, you know, great, great things you guys have mentioned, um, you know, just kind of touching on what we touched on earlier. Um, you know, I think you guys hit all these in the chat here, which is awesome. Uh, you know, there's that uh, GPA. I think someone said grades. Um, you know, even looking at the breakdown between, uh, you know, new member GPA, member GPA and the all men's. If the new member GPA maybe is a little low, um, you know, compared to the all men's or the members, then maybe there's, they're getting a little too much thrown on them or they need a little help in the academic department. Um, you know, with that member GPA, if that's significantly lower than the new member GPA, then maybe the, the standards and the, the resources aren't kind of carried on throughout the whole experience. And that's something worth talking about with your brothers. Um, and that last one, you know, obviously we should all strive to be above the all men's average and show that we're academically excellent on campus. Uh, you know, that, that's kind of our goal. You know, one of our values scholarship. Uh, and then everyone seemed to really touch on this one, that initiation rate and retention rate. That's great. Um, as far as like firm numbers uh, and it being measurable, a good one to judge is 80%. You know that if 80% of the guys are making it from pledging to initiation, um, you know, then, then you're holding a good number. You know, those are guys that, uh, you know, understood uh, coming in maybe what the experience was going to be. And then they were, their expectations were met. Um, you know, if guys have no idea what fraternity life is and they come in, it can be a little shocking. Um, or if you promise that they're going to have this great, you know, leadership opportunity and this opportunity to learn and grow. And, you know, all they get is a, is a couple tests uh, every few weeks, um, you know, then that can, you know, that can change their perception of, of what they're getting into and, uh, you know, maybe cause them to drop. Um, you know, ideally, we'd shoot for that 90 or 100 percent. If you're hitting 90 percent, you're doing really well. Um, you know, that means that you're really hitting some of those benchmarks and guys feel involved and hundred percent is a great thing. That means guys were super excited and ready to go. Um, at that 80% mark, if it drops much below that, it's uh, worth addressing and seeing if maybe there's some issues within the program or, um, you know, maybe the chapter needs to be more involved. So guys feel more welcome, just like all of you all touched on with uh, feeling part of the group. Um, so just kind of keeping those numbers in mind is a great way to just very quickly uh, assess uh, how the program is doing overall. Uh, and then, you know, everyone talked about that active engagement all the way through and even into graduate life. Uh, you know, that's right there as well. You know, just looking at the juniors and seniors, did they get burned out because, you know, they were tasked with doing everything or do they feel excited because they were prepared and now's their time to shine? Um, you know, so really, really taking a deep dive and seeing, you know, how are guys sticking all the way through? Are they excited uh, all the way up until the day they graduate? And, and see if maybe if there are issues, if that starts in pledge ed. Um, that's a great way to do that. Um, now, the best way to check uh, that is obviously do like a formal feedback from new members, uh, you know, post post initiation. You know, it's, it's easy to say, hey, guys, come talk to us about the program or, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, did you like it? Did you not? But really taking the time to do some sort of formal feedback. Uh, is, is really beneficial. And I think, Jade, we had a poll. Yes, we do. Yet another poll. Um, and which, by the way, all of these polls, brothers, are anonymous. I mean, we can't see who is voting. We only can just see the tally at the end. Uh, we've got a question out there. Does your chapter conduct a formal evaluation after your new member ed period? This, we really, we'd really like to know, um, you know, is this something that we need to help chapters with on, on how do we do something like this? So we'd love to get your feedback. This, your input is really going to help uh, shape the new member education program and what we, we offer to chapters and colonies. So um, does your chapter or colony, forgot to add that in there, conduct a formal evaluation? If you could head on over to the polls and, uh, and let us know, that'd be terrific. 
Yeah, and by by formal we mean you know is that is it written down or is there a designated meeting for that to get that feedback? Not just you know do you guys feel comfortable uh, telling you their opinions? Like is there that allotted time or uh, area for them to do that? And as they're they're uh, giving us that feedback, Logan, uh, you probably continue on here with the other bullets. Great. Yeah. No, I'll I'll, I'll go ahead and. Uh, we'll keep the ball rolling. Um, so new members, um, another one is, you know, new members understanding the chapter's vision and mission and the values of Phi Gamma Delta. You guys touched on that as well. Um, you know, how equipped are they to become fully initiated brothers and really be bought into what you're doing? Um, and that's why it's so important to have those meetings as a chapter and say, you know, what is our focus? What is our vision? Who do we want to be? You know, and then that starts with uh, any brother in the chapter starting that conversation. It doesn't have to be the president. It can be, you know, you, the new member educator, future new member educator. Uh, you can go in there and, and start that conversation of, you know, what is our vision? And then once you have that, you can communicate that to the new guys, um, you know, and, and really uh, get them excited about what they're hopping on board with. Um, that last one is our new members capable of becoming chapter leaders after they complete new member ed. Uh, you know, new member ed, uh, you know, historically can sometimes be um, just a series of tests, you know, like who are the immortal six? Uh, where were we founded? You know, what was the first chapter to, you know, have a house? Um, you know, all these things kind of feel like these bullet point history, uh, history lesson. It, it really doesn't have to be that way. You know, new member education is this time to, to mold them uh, you know, and help build them up to that courageous leader in the chapter. Uh, so, you know, th that's a great question to ask yourself. Are these guys fully prepared or do they have another semester of really learning what it means to be a brother? And then maybe addressing uh, some ways, you know, we could, we could, you know, resolve that. By the way, does anybody know the answer to that third question that Logan asked? The first Phi Gamma Delta chapter to have a chapter house, which was also the first fraternity to have a chapter house. This is the first fraternity chapter house in the United States. It was a, a Phi Gam chapter. Where, on what campus was it? Ding, ding, ding. Wow, Kendall, Sam, Caden, Eric, you're all over it. You all knew it was Penn State. Well done, brothers, well done. Man, I thought I was gonna stump them with that. I was wrong. I underestimated our undergraduate brothers, Logan. Good answers, brothers. Well done. And actually, that's right. Amelius, you're, you're right. It is the same house that they have right now at Penn State. That is so true. That is absolutely right. I forgot about that. Man. Yeah, thanks, Amelius. It's great, to, it's great to see you in here. And by the way, Amelius, a graduate uh, initiate, so he didn't even go through the Pledge Ed program, and he knew that answer. Man. All right. Um, let's see here. I got off track. Sorry. Um, so, brothers, it's it's important to take you know a quick assessment, and you know how are we doing as a chapter? There's another reason why we need to have these measurables in place, and that is to give the the chapter an understanding of what are we going for when we create when we have a pledge ed program. I mean, if you were to ask your brothers. Um, as, as the new member educators, you know, if you were to ask your brothers, why do we even have a new member education program? I wonder what kind of responses you would get back. Um, well, you need to hopefully direct them toward this, this assessment here and say, okay, we do this because we need to support them academically, make sure that they feel welcome, that they're engaged with the chapter. Um, so these things help you also provide some direction to the chapter as to even why we even have a new member education program. So quick question, let me, I'm going to, uh, go off script here again. Um, sorry, Logan, I should have warned That's you all good. before our presentation. <laughs> um, I'm going to go off script here again. When it comes to, uh, academics and I'm, we've got our, we've got our educational director on the line here with us as well. Um, you know, when it comes to academics, brothers, what are some of the things when it comes to the, the new members that, you know, really help them, you know, tackle, tackle things academically and, and devote the time needed to succeed academically? Are there things that you're doing to support that? 
because uh, at the very least, we can't be direct detracting from that. That's for sure, you know, through our new member education program. But, you know, are there certain things that you all do to support their academic success? Love, would love to hear some of your ideas or see some of your ideas in the chat here um, of things that your, your chapter or colony uh, does to, to help support academic success of the new members. Tutors, tutoring, good. Ah, okay. Mandatory in the major. That's awesome. I like that. Access to good. Oh, Jacob. Okay, so actually setting up meetings between the pledges and the scholarship chair. Good. Study together. Excellent. I like that, Colin. Meeting at the Academic Success Center Writing Center. It sounds like that's something, Colin, on your campus. It's, uh, it's a great resource. New members with brothers in the same major. Excellent. And, and Colin, to your point, most most campuses do have some sort of academic success center. So if, if you're not currently connecting new members uh, with that or telling them how to access uh, their resources, that's that's a great thing we can start doing uh, that doesn't take a lot of work. Ah, I like that. Group messages for all brothers in the same major. Good. You know, one of um, last at last year's academy, I can't remember the chapter, and if, if you're on, you can take credit for this, or you could lie and take credit for it. I don't care. Um, but the, a chapter brought up an idea uh, where they, they wanted to really uh, encourage big brother, little brother connection, and what they would do is give two-for-one study hours. You know, you have like 10 mandatory study hours a week. You could get double study hours for every hour you studied with your big brother in the library. It wasn't going to be, you know, some random place. I can't remember the chapter that that did this, but a great idea was they were kind of able to kill two birds with one stone, get big brothers, little brothers together and get pe people studying in the library or the academic center. So they gave them two for one uh, bonus study hours when they did that. Okay. All right. Hey, thank you for that. And we're, we're going to be collecting all these ideas, by the way, and making them accessible so that uh, these ideas you're sharing, um, everybody can have uh, access to them there. So well done. Thank you, brothers. All right. So after assessing the situation, um, you know, you get an idea of uh, exactly, you know, kind of the things you're doing well and maybe some things that need to be improved. So let's take a look at some best in class programs, uh, some of those chapters and colonies across North America where we've had an opportunity to take a look at, you know, those ones that are really succeeding, that are hitting those goals of retention and academics and pledge, not only pledge class involvement, but member involvement. And later on, as Andrew uh, pointed out in his chat, graduate brother involvement, not for college days alone. So the chapters that are doing really well in that space, what do their new member education programs look like? Hopefully giving us, you know, some, some North stars uh, to go after as we think about, okay, here's an area where I want to improve. Now we're going to give you some ideas of, of uh, how you can improve that. So best in, in class programs do have some things in common. And on the next slide here, we're going to show you their really three big things that that best in class programs all have. They have great organization, great communication, and they are good at adaptation. So organization, communication, and adaptation are kind of some of the three big hallmarks of our best programs out there. And so we're gonna dive into what do each one of these look like uh, and uh, then you know, get some feedback and ideas from you on how you bring these to life uh, within your own chapter or colony. So uh, with that, we'll, we'll dive into the first one here, organization. What does it mean to have a well-organized uh, program? And, you know, Logan touched on these earlier today, and we're going to, you know, dive into this a bit and, uh, and uh, have you, again, bring this to life 
with, um, with your ideas. Uh, no, number one on the organization thing, having those clear goals. And it really does, um, it really does um, tie back to what we were talking about earlier as far as those measurable outcomes. Having clear goals in place will really help you, you know, just help establish exactly why you're even doing this new member education program and also help brothers understand their role in the new member education program. Uh, and so when you have those goals in place, it helps better organize your team and also uh, the brothers and probably and also the new members as well. You know, they can understand why we're doing this. You know, what what outcome is going to come as a result of me knowing that Penn State was the first place to have a fraternity chapter? Um, you know, tell me why. What is the outcome that and why I'm doing this? So clear goals are, are really, really important. Um, also being documented. Um, uh, Logan talked about this earlier. And so it's very important that the, the new members have um, a, you know, a syllabus and have an understanding of what's expected of them every week. It used to be you know, many moons ago that it was um, a big deal that we kept the pledge education, excuse me, well, it was pledge education back then. Pledge education program secret. And we didn't tell anybody, not even the pledges of what's gonna happen next. And uh, that has really gone by the wayside as a, a, a really bad practice because how, how on earth are you supposed to be able to tell them, hey, organize your schedule, set aside time for study, but we're not going to tell you what's going to happen next week. Um, so it's really important to be able to help them organize their own time that we've got a good solid syllabus in place um, and they know what, what to expect. Same with the brothers. And lastly, supported by the cabinet and the PL, um, you, you can, you, you can answer this question if you'd like, it's kind of a rhetorical question, but let me ask the new member educators out there, how many of you have more problems with the members than you do the new members? Uh, I can remember as a new member educator myself, so help me 90% of my problems were trying to, um, get the brothers to support the, the new member education program and just have them stop, you know, becoming pseudo new member educators themselves. So having that support of your cabinet and your PL uh, is critical. And th the more that you all can be on the same page of this is what we're doing with the new member education program. This is why we're doing it. This, um, yeah, I hear you, Kyle. Um, you know, this is who's in charge and this is who's going to be directing the activities of the new member educators. Um, you know, the better off you're going to be, you know, most of my problems would, would start inevitably with during a chapter meeting, some fifth year senior saying those pledges are getting cocky, man. And then, you know, all heck would break loose from there. And, uh, you know, and then I would, it totally, uh, spun out of control. So, uh, you know, anything you can do to be on the same page as your cabinet and your PL and everybody be marching in the same direction, uh, your life will be so much easier. Um, sorry, I got, a, again, a little off track there, had a bit of a therapy moment going back to my days as a new member educator. But um, so clear goals, documented, uh, having that, that new member education program in front of the, the uh, chapter and also the new members, incredibly important. And then cabinet, PL, and you all on the same page, all marching in the same direction, all supporting this program is absolutely critical. Um, let me ask you real quick, um, how many of you, this isn't a formal poll, um, as you look at these, you know, are there some things, you know, from, uh, you know, either a goal setting standpoint or documenting or, you know, um, uh, getting support from the cabinet or the PL, anything that you're doing that is really working for you right now uh, to help you, you know, making sure that you have all this in place. Um, anybody using the, the current program offered by IHQ, uh, anything like that? I think they're now afraid to see because now we can see who is answering. <laughs> All right. Oh, here we go. 
Oh, good idea, Sam. You know, just kind of a, a rough schedule, um, you know, sitting down with that master calendar before the semester even begins. Good, 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 good. Uh, it's yeah. And it's really not too tough to do that. Uh, doing some rough, rough scheduling that way. Good. All right. So organization, big key part of a best in class program. Goals, objectives, process, very helpful. All right, Cooper. Um, right on. Uh, having other members 100% on board. Absolutely. Um, so, and, and we're going to have a, a time at the end here where we're going to have some Q&A. And if, if you're having any challenges with any one of these areas, like it's a real area where you need some help, uh, bring it up. Because uh, we've got, you know, all 50 brothers uh, and, and colony members on the line here, uh, you know, willing to uh, uh, willing to help out, stay consistent each day and time of the week. You know, Kyle, you bring up a good point. Um, just staying consistent with each day and time uh, where you're going to be meeting. I have noticed that some chapters get a little squishy with that and uh, move the calendar around a little too much. Um, and just being consistent is so, so very important. Excellent point. Yeah, a lot of freshmen have trouble finding their lecture hall. So if, if pledge or new member education is changing day to day, week to week too, that's just one more thing. So yeah. Good stuff. Thank you, brothers. Organization, very important. What else? We uh, had another point there. Communication. All right. As I, we mentioned before, Logan touched on these. And, you know, the best in class programs are really well communicated. Uh, to three major groups, the brothers, the big brothers, and the active supporters of the program. And we kind of touched on this uh, when we were talking about organization. And, you know, the, the brothers really need to understand what the new members are expected to do. And that is important because they know what they're expected to do. And anything beyond that, they're not expected to do. And it uh, kind of, you know, gets to uh, some of the examples that Logan brought up earlier about, you know, going to Taco Bell and picking up my dry cleaning and stuff like that. And, you know, when it comes to um, the brothers, really, it is the, the job of the new member educator to manage the program. You don't, you're implementing it, yes, but you're also, you know, kind of the manager of the program. And be sure to be pulling in, um, pulling in resources. I saw a lot of, you know, future new member educators, assistant new member educators, uh, if you don't have an assistant new member educator, you should get one. Uh, not only somebody to help you out uh, out there, but also it helps develop your bench strength for future new member educators. If Wabash is on the line right now, so help me. They, if you want to learn about having a having bench strength with your new member ed program, if I correct, it would correct me, Wabash, if I get this wrong. But they've got a new member educator an assistant new member educator, and then the test administrator. They've got literally three positions, and that is not only developed to help out the new member educator and make sure things are run well, but it also develops that bench strength for future new member educators. So um, Wabash, um, hands down, probably has it. Oh, thank you, Thomas. Um, you know, has that bench strength uh, program developed. So um, really, uh, you're, you're the manager. Don't, don't feel like you have to do everything. And um, lastly, brothers know their role and what isn't their role. There's only one new member educator in the chapter and it's you, period, end of story. Um, you have some folks on your team who are a part of that uh, overall committee, but uh, outside of that, you don't need anybody else behaving like a new member educator. I've done enough to address that. Um, brothers, big brothers playing an active role and an intentional role, especially, you know, in the situation we're in today with COVID, you know, brothers, you know, chime in, in the, in the chat here, if you've got some thoughts about this, but, you know, big brothers have in, in chapters that I've worked with, big brothers have really been a lifeline, uh, during this COVID situation of keeping the new members engaged because, you know, we don't have the luxury of group events right now, and we really have to be intentional with reaching out and making sure that the new members stay involved with the chapter or the colony. And I've, I've heard time and time again from chapters out there that, man, we've really used our big brothers to help the new members stay engaged and, and being intentional about what they're doing. Um, 
And, uh, you know, and when you do that, you know, making sure that the big brothers you, you have, you, excuse me, the brothers you designate to be big brothers, you know, that they are screened, selected and trained. Um, and, uh, you know, screened is so important. Logan brought up the importance of them being great role models. And we're going to talk about that here in a second and being, making sure that they are the standard by which you want the pledges to, um, the uh, the pledges uh, want to you want the pledges to uh, strive to be, and there are ways to train the big brothers as well on their role. Um, there, uh, we've got an actual big brother training program that you could actually knock out during a kind of an extended chapter meeting. Sometime it takes all of about thirty minutes to run the big brothers through this training program, and uh, if you want to extend the the, the chapter. Um, uh, meeting for a little bit longer, you could get them, um, you could get them fully ingrained in, in what it means to be a big brother. Ooh, um, I like this. Amelius, that's great. Um, you have actually a higher GPA requirements to be a big brother. Oh, all right. Set that bar high, but big brothers are so critical and they are, they play an integral role in the best in class programs. Uh, so many times I've also seen, you know, your big brother, hands you your, your pledge pin uh, during the pledging ceremony, and that's about it. Um, and you buy each other a paddle, you know, when you get initiated or whatever. Um, it does need to be much more than that, especially in the situation we're in. Uh, lastly, your supporters out there, um, PL, academic advisor, Greek advisor, all should be scheduled to attend a meeting and share their experiences and advice. The, one of the best ways we learn as humans is through story and might explain why I go off and tell stories probably a little too frequently. But um, we as humans, um, the, 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 we, we learn through stories that are passed down from generation to generation. So, and Jacob, I hear what you're saying about um, being choosy with big brothers for small chapters. Uh, amen, I wish I, had a, I wish I had a solution for you. But actually one solution, I do kind of have one. Uh, one solution that uh, one chapter did implement was using graduate brothers as big brothers. Uh, and they, they had small numbers uh, one term and incorporated their graduate brothers as big brothers for the, the new members as well. It's kind of one of those things that you don't want to make a habit out of, but you know, if you're in a tough situation, uh, I've, I have seen chapters use graduate brothers as big brothers also. But having that graduate uh, presence at a... Um, uh, at a meeting can really help out not only to show them not for college days alone, but also to share those experiences through stories. And so, you know, with that, um, I'm going to ask you brothers uh, one more poll here. Um, anybody actually have graduate brothers attend uh, any of the graduate brothers or Greek advisors or academic advisors? Uh, do you have uh, any uh, outside supporters there? Uh, do you have any of them attend uh, any of your play, uh, new member education meetings? So head on up to polls and uh, let us know if you have, oh, a lot of yeses out there. That's great. Like 80%, almost 80% yeses um, that we have the PL, the academic advisor or Greek advisor at the, uh, at the new member education meetings. That is terrific. That is great to hear or great to read, I guess. Um, and so with that, you know, tell us, give us some ideas here real quick, brothers. Let's hit the chat function again. Um, you tell us, what are some of the things that your Greek advisor, academic advisor, PL, whomever, what are some of the things they talk about when they, when they address the, the new members? Give us, give us a little bit of insight there. And can you keep an eye on the chat real quick, Logan? I've got a, I'm going to bounce over to another screen. Definitely, definitely. Just want to make sure we're tracking on time, okay. And we are. What is, isn't acceptable behavior from brothers? Not for college days alone, awesome.
Yeah, thank you guys again for for being so active today and, and helping keep this conversation going. It's been really great interacting with you guys. Yeah. So I'd love to see what else you guys have to say. And, you know, I guess given the COVID situation, it may even be easier now, um, maybe even easier now for you to get Graduate Brothers involved. You know, doing something via Zoom is a lot easier for me than, you know, having to drive aways to to go to a, a campus. So it may be easier to get uh, a graduate brother involved. So I see some things uh, like where graduate brothers are getting involved. Anybody have the Greek advisor or your academic advisor uh, participate in any of the meetings? And what do you have them address? You know, and actually since things are on Zoom now, you can um, probably, you know, tap into resources across North America. Um, you know, we've got our educational director, uh, Amelius White, on the line with us. You could connect with, uh, pardon me, I hope you don't mind me volunteering you like this, um, but connect with him. I'm sure he would be more than happy to address your new members on, you know, the best, uh, ding, 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 there we are, uh, address your new members. Um, on uh, some a academic skills and uh, what it means to succeed academic or ways you can succeed academically. All right, Tate, I like that. It means to be a brother. I like it. You know, comes to a couple meetings, talks about, I like it, Chase, good stuff. All right. So we have, you know, our, uh, our educational director, we have, um, um, you know, all, all kinds of um, resources, Logan and the field staff. Um, you know, we also have a, a PR director on, uh, you know, uh, Mike Sachs, who's uh, great with, you know, how to communicate not only uh, outside of a chapter, but within a chapter. So, you know, have all these resources that you can you can tap into across North America, even now that we're on Zoom. One of the good things to come from COVID. All right. Thank you, brothers. I, I love these ideas and I hope everybody's paying attention to what your brothers are saying. Uh, everybody's coming up with some good thoughts there. So organization, communication, what's next, Logan? Uh, that last one's gonna be adaptation. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's, I think everyone's heard like that whole, like kind of, it's almost cheesy at this point, that idea that like, you know, this, this year, this semester is unconventional or new normal or anything like that. Um, you know, even outside of, uh, you know, COVID, uh, you, you have to be, uh, you know, you have to have some level of adaptation. You have to be adaptable, uh, you know, to see your program continue to improve for new member education. Um, you know, it, it really needs to be some, you know, it needs to be intentional. You know, what are you, what are you doing to, to shake things up, to improve that one thing that bothered you last semester or to make sure that these guys are as engaged as they can be? You know, how, how are we shifting and, and moving our expectations and, um, you know, uh, you know, changing our plans to make sure that it's always happening, um, you know, in a, in a great way for our new members. Um, you know, so with it being intentional, you know, actively integrate new members um, into chapter activities and committees, uh, casually inviting new members uh, to stop by whenever just really isn't during an, isn't really an option during COVID. Um, you know, it's really, in the past, it's been so easy when you have a great space like a house or, or somewhere everyone likes to hang out. Uh, you know, on campus to just say, hey, stop by whenever, hang out with brothers, they'll be there. Or come by the event, brothers will be there. Uh, you know, with that no longer really being an option, um, you know, as, as far as safety goes, uh, I, I'm, I'm a little curious, and I'm sure, you know, Jade is too, and your brothers are as well. Um, what have you guys been doing to, to get guys, you know, actively integrated, um, you know, into the chapter in a more virtual setting?
It's awesome. Like <laughs> Got a second on the Call of Duty. Among Us, another great one. It sounds like video games are, are one of the main ways, which is great. Value sessions about, yeah. Yeah, sessions about fraternal value. That's awesome. I'm doing them on Kahoot. <laughs> I haven't been on Kahoot in a while. Yeah, something outside, distanced. Oh, scheduling classes together. Okay. Good idea, Jacob. Fantasy sports. That's mm. been a big one here at, uh, at headquarters, too. The field staff were all in a, a fantasy league together. So, yeah, no, that's awesome. Camden, you, you, did, you, you brought up a great one here. Um, we, you know, everything can be a new member education event, really. Uh, you know, doing a community service project together uh, is a, a great way to keep new member at, new members uh, involved. So that's a that's a great one, Camden. Outdoor movies on a projector, yes. Oh, did a golf outing with the Graduate Brothers. Oh, good. More golf, more golf. Oh, we've got uh, freshmen uh, and new members taking on uh, some key leadership roles there. Good. Highway cleanup, Zach, I like it. Lake fishing. What's great to see with all these two is you guys are you know talking about things that involve the whole chapter or could potentially involve the whole chapter. And that's, that's great, you know, making sure that they don't just feel integrated maybe together, but with, with the older brothers as well. And, and some of you even mentioned graduates, um, which, is, which is great as well. Low hoop basketball turn. That's the only kind of basketball I play is low hoop. So. <laughs> um, excellent. Hey, I, I, brothers, I hope you're, you're seeing all these great ideas go by. I hope you're taking notes and stealing these great ideas from one another. There's, there's some good stuff here. So well done, well done. Yeah, and, and you guys keep dropping them in, in there as we kind of continue, continue on a little bit um, on this slide. I wanna make sure we leave a little bit of time at the end for some Q&A since I believe this is a 85 minute block uh, if, I'm, if I'm right, Jade. Um, You're correct. And so, yeah, y'all keep dropping them in there. This is awesome. Spike ball, yeah, that's fun. Um, so, you know, I think on the like interpersonal side and the video game side, you guys are you know totally there, right? You're leaning into the technology. You're finding great and new ways to do things that you would already do together. Um, you know, normally you all sit together and watch the big game, but y'all are playing fantasy sports, so you're still getting that uh, you know casual trash talk with brothers, uh, that really good quality time in the group chat. Um, but as far as embracing technology, uh, you know. Even just, I think someone said values nights, having those nights for open discussion, open forum, those uh, moments of vulnerability or uh, you know, discussion of the vision. Those can happen, especially with technologies like Zoom. Uh, you know, trying to find uh, you know, somewhere to plug up your laptop is probably the hardest part of that and then making sure everyone shows up. Uh, you know, so, so with embracing that technology, um, one thing a lot of chapters don't know is most campuses right now are offering free premium Zoom accounts to their members. If you don't have access to one through your campus uh, at headquarters, we can actually set you up with a temporary premium Zoom account. So if you wanna throw that virtual brotherhood event or that discussion or that new member education uh, event and you don't wanna be capped at that 40 minutes, um, you know, and you wanna have a larger 
group of attendees that can all be in the same room together and use that breakout room feature and all those great premium Zoom features. Uh, you know, reach out to your field secretary uh, and they can help you set that up and make sure that you have that resource available to you as well. Um, you know, it's great for, you know, some of that, like say you're doing that Among Us night, you know, you can break guys in the breakout rooms and they can use their camera and then talk during discussion or, you know, you know, things like that. You can have each other talking and you can, you know, have the big, if you're doing a tournament, you can have guys break off into the breakout rooms with who they're going to be playing against and then come back together, um, you know, and, and go through it. Uh, I guess just to, I'm just curious, uh, you know, as, as far as Zoom goes, like I said, how many of you guys uh, have, or, or I guess don't have uh, that feature uh, through your university, a premium Zoom account? I gotcha. Yeah, Google Meet, Google Hangout, all great. I, I think, you know, bringing up Google Meet, you actually brought up a great point. You know, we're not just limited uh, to the ones we use, you know, typically every day, like, you know, maybe like a Zoom for class. Um, yeah, Chase, you brought up that great point. Discord is a good way to do some of those video games too. You can have separate waiting rooms for different games and uh, video chat, so, and it's free. <laughs> which is great as well. You know, so really expanding out past uh, like our initial wheelhouse, we can really see that there are some other options. Um, one great event I've seen work for one chapter was they did, uh, I believe they did it for a recruitment event. Uh, they did like a Zoom blackjack. So uh, they had dealers and breakout rooms and guys were playing blackjack and the dealer had his camera angled down and they're doing things like that. So uh, you can still, uh, you know, enjoy, you know, enjoy the things you would normally do together, like that casual poker game, but just do it virtually. Um, yeah, so, you know, we, we've talked about these a little bit, um, and you guys have talked about what's worked well uh, for the chapter. Um, as, as far as adapting, right, I think New Member Ed has a, a been, you know, we've had to change a lot, and the chapter operations, we've had to change a lot. Um, I guess just in general, what have you guys had to change about new member education? How have you guys shifted for a more virtual world, you know, even past the integration side and maybe even on like, how are you doing meetings? You know, how are you all getting together? How are you doing those things? Maybe great to share with your brothers. And if it's the same answer of uh, like Zoom and Discord, feel free to just throw that back in there. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that, that's probably a lot more Discord than I would have initially guessed, which is great. It, it sounds like that's been working well. Oh, using some PowerPoint slides to teach material. Good stuff, Tate. I like that. And that takes some work to put those together. So whoever uh, among your brothers is putting those together, um, well done. That's not, that takes a little, little bit of effort there. Yeah, that is, that is great. Um, and that's definitely something you want to pass down via like Google Drive or or something like that to the next new member educator, make sure that that persists even if things go back in person. Uh, maybe even outside of new member education, in what ways has the chapter had to change the way they do things? And you know, maybe do we see any ways that could apply to new member ed? Zoom for recruitment. Oh, interesting, Jay. Jacob, sorry about that. That's awesome. While you guys are um, still typing in there, I think for the sake of time, 
I'm going to go ahead and, and move on. Uh, but you guys keep sharing. This is great stuff. Um, so, yeah, we've talked a lot about, you know, what you can do, what people are doing. Um, but, you know, an important thing we want everyone to take away from this is that you can make an action plan relatively easily. You know, find that one or two things that you want to work on. Um, and it's something you can do uh, to start working on your new education program now. Um, so, yeah, creating an action plan is really just about discovering uh, some simple changes you can make this spring to ensure the success of your program. Um, and it's a lot easier, you know, than I think we sometimes work it up to be, you know, making that small change is, is not, you know, the end of the world. Um, it, it can be relatively easy. So think about all these, you know, best in class, uh, you know, ideas or categories we've talked about. You know, think, think about that in your head and maybe um, what small steps you need to take to be able to make that change or to better implement that or to better meet that goal in your new member education program. So I want you guys to think about that real quick. Um, as you're thinking about that, um, what I'd love to see is if we can translate that into some SMART goals. So, you know, a SMART goal, uh, any of you that have been on, um, on cabinet uh, or exec board recently have probably seen uh, some SMART goal stuff with your field secretary. Um, a SMART goal is just specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's relevant, and it's time bound. So, you know, if you say you want your new, mem new member class uh, GPA to be better, that's very vague. But if you say you want to, you know, improve the GPA by a tenth of a point by the end of the, you know, uh, next semester, you want to get the average up a tenth of a point. That's something that's attainable, time bound, relevant, all of that. So thinking more specifically about all that we've talked about today, um, I want everyone to drop some SMART goals, uh, maybe in the chat. Uh, I know that's a lot to ask to formulate real quick, but uh, if you guys could just give it your best shot, I'd love to see what you guys are hoping to do uh, when you go back to your chapters. And, and while you're doing that, um, you know, when you're making these goals like long term and more formalized, you'll want to think about, you know, who's responsible. That's probably going to be you and your team, but also, you know, what brothers are going to play a key role in it. Um, what date do you want to have it done by? And then how are you going to follow up? How are you going to make sure it got done? And it doesn't have to be perfectly, uh, you know, in this format, just any, any goals that you want to take away from this, it'd be great to see what you guys are working on. I know one for the chapter I'm working with. Attention to 95% by the end of the year. That's awesome. You know, and with, with a goal like that, you can then kind of break down how do you plan to do it. And it's a, it's, a great, it's a great thing to present to the chapter and be able to kind of build those steps up. Weekly syllabus, awesome. Canon did a great job of, speaking of breaking things down, um, like Logan said, Canon did a great job of exactly how he's going to get this done. And uh, talking an hour with his committee twice a week leading up to this. Good, good, good. That's a good example of, of a good smart goal and, and how you're going to make it happen. Good, Canon. Excellent. 3.4. Oof. Zach, I can say this honestly, I don't think I would have met that standard. Um, so. I, I think I might have my uh, new member semester and not much after there. <laughs> Zach, I like the way you aim high. Good stuff. Super great.
and I'm hoping you guys are seeing like as you're uh, typing these out that they're they're not uh, this level of planning is you know pretty straightforward and and and, and pretty easy to do and it it's really the hard part is setting those goals, you know, I and mean, then it's just about getting the men excited about it. It's great, it's drive high from the start, yeah. Looking for excellence. Yeah, this is terrific. Good. Good, Kyle. I like that. Great. Excellent. Um, yeah, I think just for, for time again, I'm going to move on to the next slide, but you guys please start keep typing smart goals and thinking about your smart goal. Um, you know, these are, these are great things um, for us to keep, you know, keep working on. All right, the resources to help you meet your goal. There are a ton of them out there. And um, we talked about you know, what, uh, what's available with the Big Brother training program. Uh, you have at your disposal at uh, phygam.org pre-formatted new member ed syllabuses that you can just fill in uh, the information. Everything is pretty much ready to go. It just needs uh, the, uh, the um the information that's custom to your chapter or colony. And last but not least, at least on this list here, and there's a ton more stuff, uh, the IHQ Zoom account we were uh, talking about earlier. And actually, uh, we're going to be providing uh, a, a bigger list of resources. And in the interest of time, actually, Logan, why don't we hit those next couple slides here of what's available to you? I mean, look at all this. Uh, new member educators uh, manual uh, for those of you who are creating your syllabus. I saw some ideas dropped in there about creating your own syllabus and you know creating the outline for the program. There are resources out there where you don't have to you know build it from scratch. It's already built, and you can kind of you know pick and choose what you want to drop in there to the program. Um, so there are are excellent resources out there at phygam.org already, uh, you know, ready for for your. Uh, for your use and, um, you know, tips and tricks, hazing prevention. Um, and a lot of this is in the new member ed materials already. Uh, but if you wanted to share this with a link to the new members or, you know, uh, share it with uh, parents of new members, sometimes they have questions. I remember that happened to me. Um, I had a parent ask me, you know, what's your policy on hazing? And uh, back in the day, I had to send them something in the mail. Uh, but you can uh, email them these links. And very important, you know, uh, mental health issues, um, uh, making sure that we know um, what to look for uh, when it comes to signs from our brothers when they need help. Uh, and so those suicide prevention resources are available out there as well. So more resources than we will ever know what to do with, and uh, they're all there for you at phygam.org. So um, you know, we have 50 different chapters represented here, chapters and colonies represented here on the line. You know, what closing questions do you have that you may need some uh, help with? And yes, Canon, we can, we will get those uh, uh, links in the slideware uh, sent to you all so that you'll uh, have them available. So good question. Well, whatever email you registered with, uh, we're going to try and get all this sent out, like Jake said. Um, and also your field secretary um, should have most of this. And I think that link I sent earlier. Uh, it has the most of them underneath that. <clears throat> yeah, as we're getting close to closing up, uh, we have about, a, I think, about two, two minutes or so uh, for any questions you guys have. Thank you guys. We, I know I've thoroughly enjoyed this so far. Yeah, as have I. And you know, if you have questions afterward that you know pop into your head after we uh, break from here, um, you know how to get a hold of Logan at phygam.org. 
Um, and uh, the uh, and then you, my contact is inf information uh, is available here as well. Good question from Jacob. How do other chapters deal with pledges not showing up? Um, what policies are typical? Good question, Jacob. Anyone have uh, a thought they want to share? Um, Logan, I'll let you take that one if you have any um, things that you've picked up from chapters you work with. Yeah, um, I, the biggest thing is let them know well ahead of time, like when everything's going to be. The, the more they know, the sooner they can get off of work, they understand how important it is you express that to them is going to be so huge. Um, basically eliminate all the variables that would keep them from not coming. And then past that, it starts with a conversation. And if they're not showing up, you need to talk to them about the importance of it. And if they don't seem to get it, um, then, you know, that's where you maybe think, that, you know, maybe it turns out they're not as great a fit. Um, but generally, I found that if, if you just remove most of these chapters have found. Oh. No, nope, we're ending. Man. Yep. Did we I'll, lose uh, everybody? I'll, I'll, finish, I'll finish that in the chat. Okay. I think we still have everybody. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, if you liked what you heard, uh, my name's Jade. That's Logan. If you didn't like it, I'm Rob Cadill, and he's Todd Rogers. So, <laughs> thank you, brothers. <laughs>